there. Welcome back to uh, Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. Almost stumbled that, but <laughs> it is the name of our podcast. I am one of your hosts, Rich Mackey. I'm your other host, Caitlin Dre. And I guess if we screw that up a little bit, people know that we record these each time. Right? right? It's every time we come to you live, recorded, recorded live. In right. front of no audience. But we have a small audience today. We've got a couple of our guests are sitting behind us being right. very, very quiet. So quiet. Um, super sensitive microphones. So uh, today our episode is Things Jesse Hates. Uh, this is going to be a series. that we It's do. a long list, folks. I gotta tell you. <laughs> this is going to be a 90 minute episode. <laughs> Buckle up. No, it won't. It'll be the it's standard a, half hour. It's so. li- limited to the marketing industry things that Jesse doesn't like. True. Um, we do get some of the things he doesn't like in the general world as well, okay. but we're going to keep this uh, limited to marketing. So everybody's yeah. got an opinion. Jesse's our creative director, uh, and he'll be joining us uh, to talk about all those things. And in a little spin, uh, Caitlin and I are both going to stick around to chat with Jesse yes. uh, instead of just you know me wandering off and letting Caitlin <laughs> take care of it. So I think since this is a something that someone hates episode, and I may not hate all the things Jesse does, we'll we'll see. Right, we're gonna find um, out. We'll find out. But um, I have our cocktail for this episode. I know Caitlin's already like, please just take this one away. That's so gross. So uh, this cocktail originally originated at the Detroit Athletic Club, um, as I learned from a Twitter uh, follower. Such history. And it's called the Last Word. Okay. Uh, and it is. I um, think. I just need to interject also. I think it's really funny that you love this cocktail so much because of the name also. And I'll just leave it at that. And then you could tell me what's in it. Except you won't leave it at that because when I say something, you'll come back and oh, I don't know, have it's, the last word. For us, it's a race though. Like, kind of. Sometimes. Right? <laughs> Um, it just depends. I mean, I think as I get older, I tend to just let other people have the last word more often. I just don't care. You've chosen much. which hills. Oh yeah. I've yeah. got my hills. And if I'm, if I'm running up that hill and ready to die, you might just want to right. Off. It's time for you. To All right. Die. So the last word, um, the it is too. equal parts, uh, lime juice, not an issue with Caitlin. Nope. Loves the lime juice. Into it. Gin, which Caitlin... Here for it. Yes. yes. It's her fault that I'm drinking gin. Her <laughs> and uh, her in-house bartender slash spouse. Yes. Um, he has been wonderful with the gin cocktails. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll drink gin now. <laughs> uh, then the third piece is maraschino liqueur. Also, also in. Totally fine. Sign me up. And here's where things go sideways South. for Caitlin. So terrible. Uh, green chartreuse. Nope. Do not endorse... So if you've never had chartreuse, the best thing is if you like black licorice, you'll probably like chartreuse. Uh, if you do not like black licorice and hearing me say that just makes you want to go black, um, you would not like chartreuse. So the thing about this one, though, um, the way I do it, it's for one cocktail. It's generally an ounce, an ounce, an ounce, an ounce. So it's a four ounce cocktail, which mm-hmm. is normal, Standard, I think. Yeah. Um, the... The chartreuse is only one fourth of the drink. So the maraschino liqueur That's cuts a fourth it too much. A little bit. <laughs> but the lime juice really changes it. I'm going to get you to drink one of these. You at might some have point. to like blindfold me, and I still then might not trust you. I don't know. I gave it, I gave the chartreuse like a little sniff, and I think I might be able to get over it, but it just the principle of the anise flavor is Yeah. That's it's one bridge too far. I and can't do it. So it's something that Caitlin might have a taste of is what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. But that if you're in a bar that is never going to cross your lips to no, order. Would not be it. Like, I don't even know if I would take it for free in a bar. Wow. If somebody would be like, we have this extra thing. I'd be like, that's okay. You can give it to someone else. Well, I mean, you'll save a little bit of money. Although as I, I understand, I know what you're, Bourbon collection looks like right. in whiskey. That's, yeah, we, but, <laughs> we're not worried about saving money on cocktails. But chartreuse alone, I mean, the bottle was $55. I was like, holy cow. Like, Can I just tell you, though, that like $55 at my house is a right. steal for any, like. Well, that's like if you get into my husband's bourbons yeah. and things, like $55 is like, oh, that's a reasonably that's, priced. That's a, such an affordable right? whiskey. I'm really thrilled that my husband has started a, like toying with liqueurs and rum because the the msrp on rum is so much (laughs) lower like you can get a really baller rum for like 60 bucks i'm like sign us up we'll take three yeah absolutely like a really great like black strap is not gonna set you back that much 
You know, that's funny. I mean, it's probably at the point where, you know, putting that in your gas tank might be much <laughs> more efficient um, than paying for gas I'll these just days. Walk. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, anyway, um, the last word, I like it. I had one uh, the other night. I made it for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, the fun thing is, it's almost like this iridescent yellowish green. Yeah. Um, so, it's a really pretty drink. It's pretty. Um, especially if you put it in like a cut crystal glass. Yeah. Um, because then you get the light reflecting off and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of learning that the glass does matter for a drink, especially a colored drink. Yeah. Do you, I always, I feel like I see it in a Nick and Nora glass, like the little, the little. S- Small tasters. Am I making that up? Um, Did I invent that? I mean, the one I saw that um, this person on Twitter had was like in a goblet. Like, and I and it was not a four ounce drink. It was like, <laughs> it was like 12 a 16 ounce. Drink. ounce. <laughs> Um, when I read it, um, oh, it had a name for what you're supposed to put it in. I put it in a coupe glass yeah. because almost everything I drink now goes in a coupe glass. Coupe we got 12 ounce coupe glasses and I'm sorry. <laughs> could not be happier. <laughs> Yeah, they're wonderful. So it's like a one cocktail limit. At the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't have to get up and refill. Yeah. Like, you load it up, settle in for your movie, and you're good to go. Until you have to get up and go do something. Right. Um, you just, like, roll to the next much. activity. Be in a recliner. A 12-ounce coupe glass. Is it, maybe it's only 10. It's, I know it's more than 8 because we looked at them. Because we have some 6-ounce martini glasses, and yeah. that just was not enough. I just don't like a martini glass. It's hard to, it's so hard to drink. And a margarita glass, the same thing. I love the shape. It's, it's very like, fun, yeah. but stuff just goes everywhere. Yeah, it's not, it's not an economical, like, table to yeah. mouth. Situation. I want a margarita on the rocks in a highball glass. Like, that's yeah. fine. I'm yeah. good with that. Yep. All right. So, uh, curious if any of the Chartreuse fans are out there. Um, it's new to me. Like, this is, I think, the very mm-hmm. first time I've ever had it. Um, but we did buy it and I had to look up whether it needed to be the yellow or the green and then learned that the only difference is one is yellow and one is green. It doesn't change the flavor of anything. I have so. so many questions about that. I need, I need a chartreuse expert to tell me why we have two colors that right? are the same thing, just different color. Like I'll bet it's just because of the color the drink needs to be for some weird reason, or maybe it's a regional thing. I don't, I don't know. know. We're, I'm gonna. Look, I'm gonna look into this. I don't know. It's made by monks. We learned. Yeah, so. in like f- France or something. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Zach's nodding his head. It, he's our producer, so he's it, he's done his research. <laughs> so that's good. All right. So I know nothing about what Jesse hates for this episode. I know some things he hates, of course, because we've been together for over five years. Uh, So I'm pretty good with some things. Um, But this will be a fun episode, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, breaking the format a little bit uh, and pulling that up. So I think with that, like, we'll get him in here and find out what Jesse hates (gasps) in the marketing world. All right. Thanks for sticking with us to learn uh, things Jesse hates. We do have Jesse here with us. Hello, Jesse. Hey, how's it going? Uh, And Caitlin's here on my side as well. We are ready. This is going to be so great. Just a little warning. Um, I know we've had some swears in earlier episodes. This this is a rant episode, so there might be some swears. Some swears. Maybe a few F-bombs dropping here and there. I'll try to control those. Um, (sighs) No promises. No promises. We'll see how that goes. Um, but basically, like, um, you know, these episodes will probably burn through the whole team at one point here um, on what our pet peeves are, what kind of things we hate. Um, but we will also do the, the opposite side of it. You know, what do we really love? Yeah. What's working well? What's inspirational for us? Um, we just decided to start with a rant instead of inspiration. Um, and I guess that says something about our culture, I, but that's another episode. I think, like, the gestures widely, like... Everybody deserves a rant at this point in the universe. Like we all deserve just like a little bit of valve release Venting situation. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It actually is. And it's very it, healthy. Yeah. Like you can lower your blood pressure by venting. Mm-hmm. Like bottling everything up inside is not good for you. And on it, a, it's just fun to joke about. Right. In a similar vein, like swearing is good. It, like it's a little dopamine hit. It's also a sign of intelligence. We're very smart. Yeah. <laughs> I am so smart. It's ridiculous. Jesse, tell us first, like, give me like that, like a 15 second overview, maybe longer than 15 seconds. You've worked here for a long time. Uh, who, who are you? How did you get here? 
So um, I'm the creative director here. I actually started as an intern. Jesse is the ultimate Anecdote 71 success story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to joke that I was an intern and then uh, just never left. And they had no choice. Keep me around. <laughs> we tried. He was a contractor for a while. So no benefits. And just sort of if there's work, you get paid. If there's not work, you go home. Yep. And I was dumb enough to stick around through. Yeah. You stuck through all that. And then we're like, well, we might as well just hire him. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy won't go away. <laughs> How many, how many like name iterations have you been through? Because you, you are pretty rich even like you buy a little bit. Yeah. Little bit, yeah. Um, but that was all intern. Just, just the one from okay. just to antidote. Okay. Yeah. I, see, I felt like there were more <laughs> than that. Okay. No, that one stuck around for quite a while before yeah. we did the rebrand yeah. in 2016. Mm -hmm. Yes. Trying so to think about when the way back was that? <laughs> I know, I know. It seems so <laughs> long ago. Right? Um, as we hired people who were like, we haven't hired anybody born in 2000 or 2001. We haven't hit we? 2000 close. yet. We've we're been so really close. close. We have a 99, I think. Yeah. Like a few, I think. Yeah. 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 So um, that'll be like one's the big one. It's going to be really. Yeah. I love painful. telling people that I went to college. I graduated college in 1994 and having them go, I wasn't born yet. Right? And it's like, okay, great. Well, Thank you. Thank didn't you. Want, it hasn't won. I call them. I lovingly call them children. Like they're so wonderful and enthusiastic. I know, but it's not them. nice. Like I know it's not nice, but I'm like they're just sweet babies, and we'll like get to I you should like hear what they like, call you, right? I know, like <laughs> that <laughs> grandma over there in the corner, she doesn't know anything. Well, we'll get to that right. in one of their episodes. Right. Like, what do you hate? <laughs> I hate being called a child. Right. But so they like at one point, one of them said like, "Oh, you're the same age as my parents, right?" And you were like, oh, yeah, yeah. "I think I have to die now." That was <laughs> actually somebody in an interview, and then followed up to try. To say that <laughs> with um with no 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 like my mom's super young She's just, and i'm like you're not like not just stop me. stop <laughs> just <laughs> maybe that's why i've stuck around so long i've never compared rich to my parents well it's Were because you? you're a 75 year old man i was just inside. gonna say like jesse is our resident like crusty old man on the inside like so youthful and um it just like charming and yeah, very Thanks modern with like design yeah. and staying up on things. But, but inside, on the inside, he is 77 and get off my lawn. Oh, oh man. <laughs> we don't know. It comes from a place of love. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness. Uh, and Jesse's not a chartreuse drinker either. He he likes a good whiskey or bourbon, though. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What do you, I want to know. I'm So, like, I know... But I don't know if I know marketing things that you hate. I know the like get off my lawn hatred of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I know a few. Yeah. There's been several that came up recently that I'm curious if they're on your list. Do you want to just get into it? I think so. I think we just like start us off. Hit. Okay. Right. What do you what do you hate? Number, yeah. number one is design fluff. Can you can you say okay. more about like, what that like tell me what that is? It's not marshmallow fluff, because that's fantastic. I wish that, that's way better. This is um and it's a lot it's not so much client facing. It's a lot of agency to agency, like justifying creative choices mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of just justifying them. Sometimes it gets a little long. Uh, so like, like we made this choice because of X and Y and Z and, and like they, those aren't even related to the end product. Yeah, they're trying to get like, way too philosophical about yeah, it. And yeah. Just, oh, sure. Uh, so like, so like, you know, we named our colors. Is that fluff? I think that's in good fun. It ties to our culture and it's in it good is. fun. So I think saying, you know, like, here's our three page essay on yes. why we chose yellow for this instead of I like yellow. Yeah. I think anytime you get over like a few paragraphs talking about any one thing in particular, uh, you're kind of patting your own ego at that point. Like just we did a great job. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. over over justifying things might be a better yeah. yeah. Um, Instead of this looks good, that's why we did it. Mm -hmm. Like this makes sense for our clients. Just, like sometimes that's all it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It's like this this is the right visual choice and that's why we picked yep. it. Yeah, I think at the very root of it it's just overcomplicating something that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily need to be overcomplicated. Yeah. 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 And I think that's one thing that I like about your style is that you like you're an illustrator kind of at heart, like mm -hmm. give you a pencil and a piece of paper and you're going to sketch mm -hmm. like nobody's business. And I think that that simplicity on the start helps. It kind of flows through most of your design work that you do. Um, 
And that's, I think, what I like about that. And you're not really justifying it. You're like, this is what my hand did with the pencil. And therefore, this is what I'm doing in Illustrator yeah. or in Photoshop or whatever you're working in. Um, and that's the way it's going. It's unfussy, which, yes. I mean, like. Yes, unfussy. Yeah. Fussy design would be something Jesse hates. Yeah. yeah. That's the same yeah, thing. Get rid yeah. of it. Don't need it. Um, I do want to say, in what, fairness oh. on our colors also, some of them are actually the color that's He's going to write four paragraphs. Names. Uh, no, we've actually got, I think it's just a couple sentences in our brand book. About yeah, it. I don't even know if it's that. Uh, maybe, though. Like, maybe so like, it's like one. Navigator Navy or Navigation um, Navy. Is it's that not that. That was a former client. Oops. Um, no, it's, <laughs> I haven't studied our brand guidelines in a really long time. So it's Invigorate oh, Orange, which is our primary okay. orange. Invigorate Orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so they've got some, the Navy has a name and the green has a name. Um, but yeah, you can check out the brand book. It's I on the server. I probably should do that. All right. Enough What's on next? that. <laughs> yeah. What would what, you get next? Oh, this is a little, I don't know if I should even say this one, but I'm going to. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> um, it's a hot take. Agency specific, uh, like positioning themselves as overly quirky just for the sake of being like quirky or different or odd. Mm. I think uh, everybody does it to the point where you're just doing it to fit in at this point and you're not as different as you think you are. So basically, we're all weird. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> We even have that headline on our website, but like I'm we're weird, but different. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a little bit of a rant I think, on that. Oh, that was a really agency. weird noise coming out of my throat there, but I think that um, it kind of goes along with your design fluff really close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where it's just like it's that trying too hard, mm -hmm. like just be who you are. Like mm -hmm. our biggest thing when we talk to clients, like we use very plain language. We're very yeah. much like we are on this podcast. Mm -hmm. This is just who mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it is, you know, do we want to drink with them? Do we want to have dinner with them? Could we just chat and laugh and drink? Not, you know, well, we're experts in. I don't think we've ever said we're experts in God, anything. Have you seen my skin, um, especially not in print, like on our website or mm -hmm. anything. Now, I'm, now somebody's going to go find it there. Right. Send me, yeah, send probably. me uh, a screenshot. I'm we'll take it out. We'll take it out. Gonna dial into the Wayback website yeah. machine and like <laughs> the whole industry tries too hard sometimes, and mm -hmm. most of what we do is actually pretty simple. Yeah, um, you just have to like. You know, I asked do it. this question the other day in the office. How much of it is the like? creative brain where you're like, but I'm good enough at what I do. Cause like, I have this as a photographer where I'm like, please just like me and pay me money to do like, look at how good at this I am. I promise I'll, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it's like, we're just trying so hard to justify like the creative piece of people's brains when they're like, I'm trying so hard to justify the amount of money I'm charging. And like, but look at how like fun and talented and we, and uh, you know, how much of that is like, I think there's some of it that, yeah. you know, we must have this weird, quirky, fun backstory because mm -hmm. we're, um, we are storytellers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and we did try a backstory with Antidote 71. We've never actually published it. It was mm -hmm. a load of crap and fake. <laughs> and maybe that's why we just never, ever. We did not drink our that. own Kool-Aid. <laughs> we didn't. That. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to your photographer question though, because, so here's my, the difference there. Cause I've seen your work and I've seen you like sell to people and you don't really sell. I, cause it makes me you want to show throw them. Up. I hate it. <laughs> you, you would never be like, I'm an amazing photographer. I've done 562 like maternity portraits. You should hire me. Mm -hmm. What you do is like, Hey, here's like four samples of stuff I did recently. And people go, Oh my God, those are great. And you're like, mm -hmm. great. This is my price. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, wonderful. Because I want stuff like that. Yeah. And then you deliver stuff like that. Your work actually tells the story yeah. for you. No, I feel like I'm stepping on Jesse's podcast. Now. But well, but I just I just wonder podcast. like yeah. <laughs> I just wonder like if we're if if in that like we're different. We're try like trying so hard to like separate or differentiate or like you know what I mean? it's like that. It's it's the point where when everybody is doing that, that's not a differentiator mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I get the, the you know approach what I mean? like, to how it. Do, yeah. How do we figure out what the point of difference is when everyone is set, you know? And there's, it, it was probably a momentum swing from everybody being very, for lack of a better term, like stuck up and businessy and mm -hmm. corporate. And I think it swung way too far the other way. So we need to find a Maybe our position should be, we, we're the boring ad agency, but we do good work. Here's <laughs> some of it. If you like it, hire us. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty straightforward. It yeah. seems a little bit lack The copy will write itself. <laughs> I mean, it will. <laughs> Interesting. I think that you're right. And I think that's the same when we're doing work for clients. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why we do competitive reviews is if everybody else is saying the same thing as you why are, would you say, like, yeah. why Don't would say you say it thing. too? Like, no, yeah. no, no, no. We've got to dig deeper. We've got to find something else. Yeah. 
And agencies are the worst at marketing themselves. So my guess is it's easy to find that quirky backstory and just mm-hmm. push it. Mm-hmm. Ugh, interesting. This could be a 90 minute episode. Right? Yeah, We're going to be, be here all day. I'm ready. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, a few like quotes or things that people say that is just like a automatic buzz in my head and an alarm going off. Um, print is dead. I don't agree with it. What do you uh, want to print? What do you, it's like, what I think do you there's always like going to be a place mm-hmm. for printed stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's never going to die as much as some people want yeah. it to. I mean, we printed our benefits book. There's right. no reason that it's couldn't have beautiful. been. Beautiful. It, it's an experience. Yeah. So there's no reason that couldn't have just been a digital PDF that we send to somebody. Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if you knew this, but I think our most recent hire got it in the, um, in our interview mm-hmm. because we had extras, but otherwise I mail it to somebody mm-hmm. like when they accept, I have their address now through the HR system. Mm-hmm. I actually put it in an envelope with a little handwritten note and send mm-hmm. it to them because it's an experience and yeah. touching mm-hmm. that thing is still good. There well, is, especially yeah. when everything is on screen. I mean, you scroll through anything, it feels the same in your hand, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's a website, an app or uh, anything okay. um, yeah, yeah there's soft touch paper of varnish. soft touch there's you know embossed things mm-hmm. it's it, i think even as more stuff goes to that that's going to be an even bigger impact with some of that yeah i think you've just got to find the right time to, to actually physically print mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but it can absolutely make sense. I would agree with that. Like yeah. you know, and you know, newspapers dead. Well, it's not dead yet. Radio's dead. It's not dead yet. Like TV didn't kill radio. Yeah, you know, podcasting is just top radio. It's just new. Like it's new old radio. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but like, do you, does everybody need a brochure? No, absolutely mm-hmm. not. Uh, but saying it's completely dead is just uh, no, not true. not true. Well, and I think a great one in that is like the thank you note. Uh, like, and I remember in the middle of the COVID and we'll probably get this later or early on since we're like two years into it now, basically yeah, like, right. What, since what we closed our offices and stuff, I hit a point where like, I just missed all of you. And so I just sat down and hand wrote everybody a note yeah. and dropped them. I sort of a bunch cool. of stamps and people were like, send mail, save the USPS. Yeah, right. like, okay, great. I'll send some mail <laughs> and just send everybody notes. Um, because you know, unique to you and kind of like, Hey, you know, I'm missing you. <laughs> they had like, like, um, Custom quotes, quotes. Mm-hmm. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, remember yeah. Those that. are I have those. I had those note cards printed because they've all got a quote on the back that's from somebody that like speaks to me in some way. Mm-hmm. And I did try to match the quote a little bit to your personality and yeah. what I wrote. That's a really good example of like when printed makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really great way to do it. And yeah. I, I mean, a printed thank you note is so much better than an email. It is. It just like the tangibility of those things mm-hmm. just elevates the experience too. Like it. That little extra yep. is so valuable, especially when everything is screens, right? Yep. But if you're going to do print, like do it. make it look great and do it well and yep. you may have a reason for it. Don't yeah, do don't make it yeah. trash that some right. like a window sticker that somebody sticks in your car that just oof, goes right into the trash. Mm. That's pointless. Or make an invitation in Word and just print it, fold it in half and stick <laughs> right. it in an envelope. Oof. No, 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 no. I am no. such a paper snob. Like it's yeah. Mm. I love it. Uh, too much white space. <laughs> that is a thing. Too much white That's space. That's not a thing. When, yeah. No. Yeah. When somebody says that, uh, another, you know, just alarm is going off in my head. Um, and I don't know really where it comes from. I don't know, uh, why people have a need to just fill every inch of something with something. I don't think they I don't know. I know we've had conversations with clients before where they're like, can we add this? And can we add this? And can we add this? And it's like, if you put all of that stuff in there, if everything is important, then nothing is important. Mm-hmm. And like you have to give an opportunity to like take a breath and like digest and comprehend before you can move on to the next thing. Yeah. White space helps guide your eye. Like oh, yeah. it draws mm-hmm. you in. Um, I yeah, think that's, that's- <laughs> that's a tough one. That's I mean, and I know that like, I know we've had clients who've said like, I want to fill every single thing. And we basically, before we get into any design, we need to talk them down off of that, you know, pedestal or hill and mm-hmm. just be like, you don't want to die here. Trust me. Like mm-hmm. it's a bad place to die. And, you know, we've been successful sometimes, sometimes we haven't been, but you know, we've passed on projects where mm-hmm. it's just a clutter full of everything um, because yeah. it just, it's not going to communicate right. And it's not going to do what they want. And then, you know, it'll be our fault. But yeah. it's really, it, it can't be full. Oh, gosh. 
These are good. Like, I'm liking these. <laughs> well, I can keep going. <laughs> it's like, we're only a third of the way through. <laughs> um, worthless meetings. Oh, this is I, my favorite one. Yeah, I, I think everybody can can join me in on this one. Uh, they have to have a purpose. There has to be some kind of, like Caitlin would say, action item. I need I was just going to say, I was like, <laughs> I love an action item. Like, what, what did we spend the last 30 minutes doing? Like, mm-hmm. what are we going to do when we leave here? Because if it's just like we all sat on the screen or in this room and like, I mean, give us 30 minutes of a wasted meeting. We can give you another podcast. Right. You yeah. Know? And I will be the first to tell you that I love to sit around and chit chat, but if that's not the purpose, then... we have a little bit of that in our meetings. I think our meetings have gotten, they've gotten shorter. I've noticed, mm-hmm. you know, we can even run through like all of the current Alyssa projects. Alyssa is the efficiency queen. She's, She's not here to mess around. That is a future episode. Alyssa talking to us about efficiency and, Dealing with people like me and getting me to do things efficiently. <laughs> Rain it in, Mackie. Rain it in. Yeah, roll with that. <laughs> I think that's a really good one. So I worked someplace, a very large company, and our department um, and other departments did not like this. Uh, and I personally did this. If you if we came to a meeting and there was no agenda, I left. If we came to a meeting and I looked at the agenda and I had nothing to do with the agenda and they just wanted me there for whatever reason, I left. I can get um, behind that. And... <laughs> The Who's first, gonna become our agenda police? The first couple of times I did it, um, like people were calling my boss and they really and he was great, he supported me. <laughs> and he's like, Well, why did you need him there? Like, and they're like, What's Well, you know, we just really wanted him in the room. And he's like, That's a stupid reason. He's got other work to do. <laughs> like, if you have a question for him or you need him for something, then send great. an email. Um, right. Oh, the meeting that could be an email. So many. Yeah, same, same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that there's like a a couple of people that I follow that they like the progression of like 2020, this meeting could have been an email and then 2021 was this meeting could have been like a team's message or a Slack message. And then 2022 is like, this meeting should have been a thought that stayed in your head. (laughs) (laughs) There's been some of those. Oh man. Like, what are we even doing here? Get me out. (laughs) So, um, I want to make sure we get to one on your list because I know there's a design tool that, well, people, I'm going to use air quotes, design tool that people use. Uh, and I see it bolded over there on your notes. Yeah, it is bold. Uh, it is bold. <laughs> I guess these two can kind of, they pretty much uh, tie into one. Yeah. It's, it's Canva, the the death of me, and uh, design experience. I think they go, they go hand in hand uh, because one of them thinks that they can use Canva as design experience. And yeah. Oh, here, here, I see the purpose of it, so mm-hmm. I don't want to rag on it too much. And I don't want to be an asshole. It has a place but, in time, but like coming to an agency and saying I have design experience when it's like Microsoft Paint, it's like the 2020, it's like yeah. the 2020s version of Microsoft Paint. Right. I'm great and at like, websites. I did two on Wix. I made so. a website in Squarespace. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh... Yeah, they have their purpose. I think for small companies, yeah, yeah absolutely, can't afford absolutely. an agency, can't afford staff. They're great. I think Canva, when it started, is like a way to make social graphics mm-hmm. was fantastic. Mm-hmm. But the whole like go in there and be like, design your logo. And it's just a bunch of pre-chosen stuff mm-hmm. that you just put your words on. Like, and that's then, not... Yeah, it's really... Logo. Okay, yeah, here, I guess I could have phrased that a little bit better. It's Canva in place of an agency or a marketing like professional, I think is what gets me. The yeah. Most. Like, Oh, I don't need graphic design. I've got camp. Well, I, and think, I'm like, I think where you run into problems though, is like intellectual property where like, what do you own from Canva? Not like sure, nothing. Yeah. Anything. The, um, well, now I've lost my train of thought. Well, that was a tangent I didn't expect today. <laughs> yeah. I just completely lost my train of thought and, and we won't edit that yeah. out because why would we? It's funny. Um, but yeah, that's a rough one. Um, oh, I remember what it was. I tell people like to so, give them a second. So I've started two businesses now, and I, you know, I run businesses as a business owner, and I get like you've got overhead and you've got costs and mm-hmm. things. But part of me is like, okay, so like you know, you have somebody who's like, I want to just use Canva for a logo for my retail store. Okay, you're leasing retail space, right. which is more expensive than office space. Uh-huh. You've got inventory. You presumably bought like a cash register at some point, or, you know, you're using square or whatever, which is great. Contactless payments and all that. Like you've invested in this business and where you're going to actually stop the investment the is spending identity. like five, six, $10,000 for 
a logo and your identity? Like, no, mm-hmm. like get something hundred percent original to you. Mm-hmm. You've, you've cut off your investment at exactly the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a place where you go cheap. Now, if you're, you know, an independent artist who's doing it as a hobby and you want a logo, like, yeah, I can get where you might not want to spend thousands of dollars. Right. On it. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like there are other places you can get a cheaper logo and better logo that you own than mm-hmm. Canva. It's like Fiverr or something. Oh, you know, God, like, not Fiverr. Not Fiverr. What's oh, the other one? Oh. Thumbtack? Logo Ground is one. Okay. You end up paying like three to $700 for a logo okay. that... Um, so at least those are unique. Put up. Yeah. They are. And when well, you buy and you, it, and you buy they take it, you down. own you buy it. it. Yeah, and the terms never, there. Yeah. yeah, you get yeah. all the vector files, everything. So, yeah, that's... Um, that is a rough one. Also, Canva is never going to be a sponsor now. So that's fine, I think. We'll, we'll live with that. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> oh, let's see. Where else? What's do, yeah, what, what's is there more list? on your list? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's plenty. So I just was going to say, like, one of the things that I know Jesse hates outside of marketing and agency work is cold pizza. And I just found this out. What? Day. I know. I said I, the same thing. No, I will eat oh, it. Oh, this is the backtrack of all backtracks because yesterday you were like cold pizza is garbage I will never no it, it is garbage <laughs> okay I, th- I think garbage. me and Riley were in the same boat <laughs> is that if it was there and that was the only thing that we had to eat there was no way to there's heat it there's no up. microwave uh, uh, we'll eat it but if it's between that and something that's hot or literally anything so else. I had leftover Godfather's taco pizza and I learned that if you order it without the lettuce because if you're with the lettuce, you just can't, can't save it. Uh-huh. No. But everything else without the lettuce, one, it's really good. It's like this amazing pizza because I mean, the taco God sauce and everything. I know, that right? That is I my father in law's like favorite. But place. I had leftover and I had three pieces. So I put two of them in the toaster oven. And while they were toasting, I ate the third piece cold because <laughs> I was hungry. Desperation. But I also like, so when I started eating solid food, like when I was like three and four, we lived in <laughs> New Mexico. We lived in New Mexico. And so one of the things you do there, though, it's like you have your leftover burrito for breakfast. You have your leftover enchiladas for breakfast, but you don't heat them. Ooh. You just like so enchiladas cold, which is honestly just sort of a rolled up pizza cold. You know, it's a sauce yeah, and a top a sauce cold. and a meat. I see you're like sort of recoiling on that, but you'll do the cold pizza. I don't know. I, it's different. It seems different to me. Yeah, it was weird. Um, but... I don't know, like, I eat cold enchiladas and I'm fine with it. It's very odd. And I don't recommend it to anybody necessarily, but I like them. I'm just, so like, when you say for breakfast, I'm picturing you with like a bowl of cold enchilada, like pouring milk over the top and being well, like, no, not breakfast that. delicious. No, it's just like <laughs> a small, like little square of enchiladas on a plate with a fork, just eating it like you would. It's just not hot. I, I I think that's on my hate list. I don't think I, I think do yeah. I Welcome think we to the hot zone. <laughs> yeah. We should get to a foods we hate at some point, and maybe just do five. We minutes don't have list. enough time. <laughs> I mean, but there's a lot of food we like, though. That's true. Yeah, that list would be longer. Yeah, if not. that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What's your last? Do you have like a like a, yeah, what's, coup a de gras? what's a one you can just send us off with? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Really Which one's gonna fun. spark the emails? Um, I guess this ties in nicely with what we do. Uh, Ugly Legion. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yes. <laughs> oh, I've used that, like, since you and I had that conversation about, like, Legion doesn't have to be ugly. Yeah. Um, I've used that in so many, like, pitches that we've done and just talking to so many people. And everybody gets it. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, direct mail is always ugly and email is always ugly. But it's because it's the thing where it's like everything is important, where they're like just like trying to throw as yep. much instead of having like a well-defined message and mm-hmm. a call to action that's like very succinct. It's like, well, let's just shotgun method and see what sticks. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, like just like, like how big do I that. have to make this button to uh-huh. make people click on it? Yeah. Smaller. Yeah. Smaller. <laughs> People know how to run the internet now. Yeah, like, yeah. Button yeah. doesn't need to be full width and yeah. six inches tall. Mm-hmm. Like we'll find it, put it on the left, put it on the right, put it in the center, whatever yeah. works for your design. I actually like a good left justified button, especially if the paragraph above it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just one of my things that yeah. I enjoy. But I think that goes back to white space too. Like you can yeah. play oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, like guide your 
people where you want them to go. Like, And I think with, with lead gen, you do get into a lot of, well, I've got so much to say, I have to jam it in. I don't mm-hmm. want this email to be really long. And it's like, the answer to that is cut some of your content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe that email is or four like emails. Or make your funnel a little bit longer. Like, you, yes. you know what I mean? Like, you like spread that out a little bit. Like, instead of making them drink from the fire hose, like... Take it back a yeah, little like bit. Yeah, like one thought per email mm-hmm. is a great place to start and then give the designer time to work on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that drinking out of the fire hose uh, is just a great <laughs> phrase. It's very illustrative. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be mine because uh, I really like one of the questions that we've started asking for websites is, what is the one thing that you want a user to see on this page? Mm-hmm. And just cut it down Mm -hmm. and we're not having them look at five, six different things. Well, and it also kind of acts like a North star too, where like Mm -hmm. when we get to the point where we want to add back all this stuff, it's like, Nope. Remember at the beginning of this process, when you told us what was important to you and we've been designing around that thing and working towards that thing, like don't lose sight of that. And like, remember what you said was important to you. And we're trying to like, and it's more effective. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how much do you hate it when somebody tries to put three things in the one thing you want people to do? We don't let them do it, right? Like, yeah. You like, said one. <laughs> it's like, no, like you can't fill in three things. You've mm-hmm. got to get back to one. And I think that the interesting thing about that is obviously a page can have more opportunities right. than one thing. Right. Yeah. But what is that important thing? We're going to make sure people One of them see has that. to be on the top of the page. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be above the fold or it's got to be the first thing they come to. Mm -hmm. It can't be, you know, well, I want them to subscribe to my blog and follow me on social and fill out a form. Nope, pick one. Which, what's most important to you? Like, is the form most important, capturing that lead? Or is it really like subscribing to the blog because then you've got them on an ongoing basis? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a great one. Um, Ugly lead gen is just so bad. And, like, I just delete it. Like, I get so many bad emails and things. Mm-hmm. It's just like, done, done. Well, and it's really not that hard to just make it look a little bit better. I mean, a little bit more time in some of those things, and it would be great. And how much harder could that work for them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would argue that we don't charge clients any more for good-looking lead gen that works hard <laughs> than another agency charges them for ugly lead gen that probably doesn't work as hard. Mm-hmm. You know, our rates aren't that much different. It's not like we charge a premium to make it look good we just want everything to look good just part of the job yeah as far as we're concerned kind of why we're here (laughs) right well cool i mean that's a great list of things you hate we didn't go too far down a rabbit hole with anything yeah there were just only a couple of swears i think that was good (laughs) i held back it's organic (laughs) Uh, you help don't hold back like this is entertainment i think just the swears (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah that's fantastic I can't wait to continue this series with right. more of the team and also get to the things people love I think that's a yeah, as well. yeah maybe is the there one, one thing this, I'm gonna put you on the spot is there one thing that like you really love like what is it like yeah like a marketing trend uh, not even necessarily a trend or like a design thing that's happening right now that you're like oh, oh, into that wow that's a really on the spot yeah no kidding I'm sorry um, but I'm I will sorry. say maybe just not like a trend or anything like that but just marketing in particular um, and kind of why I got into it I guess is just helping uh, yeah. using what I can do really well and what the team does really well and helping other businesses grow mm-hmm. and uh, hit their goals is why we do it yeah yeah we're all just we're all just here to help Excellent. Yeah. I think that's an episode. We did. Cool. It. Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for coming. You. This week's quick tip is that it's okay to vent and sometimes say the things that you hate. So go ahead. It might make you feel better. That's it for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope it was as much fun to listen to as it was to make. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at at Rich Mackey. I try not to make it too difficult. It's just my name. And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore seven one on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can find me at home sipping a craft cocktail prepared by my in-home bartender. It's my husband. We'll be back with another episode every other week and a whole new cocktail recipe, plenty more tangents, and of course, answers to those pressing marketing questions. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can go to ctapodcast.live to send us an email. Or you can call our hotline at 402-718-9971 and leave us a voicemail. Your questions might be used for future episodes of the podcast. For now, like and subscribe and tune in next time. 